Uh, so to New York, uh, where there's a lot of activity in this area, there are a lot of very strong green groups in, the, in, in New York. Um, and it does work its way through. You see, so you see this kind of advertising everywhere now. Coca-Cola display, this is in, uh, what do you call it? Times Square, thank you. Uh, display powered by wind energy. <laughs> um, and why would they do that now? It's, it's clearly, there, there is a political need for it. There is a change, a cultural change happening. And Coca-Cola sees that they've got to be green. Um, but at the same time, this, this is a, a board which shows the ticking uh, time bomb, which is their uh, national debt. <laughs> just showing it going up the whole time. You can just sit there and watch it. It's pretty scary. Um, the Bank of America Tower is the greenest new building being built in New York uh, and is, a, I think, a symbol of what they're trying to do. This is the Leo next to the Leo. Um, and One Penn Plaza is the international centre for PB. So uh, went to their building, which is just down the road from the Empire State. That's the Empire State. And, and uh, I did a presentation there for them, boardroom. Then down to Houston. Houston is, Houston and Atlanta I've never been to, and I thought I might get tarred and feathered down there because I've always categorised them as being the, you know, the, the beast. <laughs> so car dependent, and, and they are. But Houston Tomorrow set up this event, and they, they contacted us beforehand and raised a whole lot of things that I should be saying. And they're talking about converting some of these massive freeways and, and using it as the basis for a whole new transit system. So generating a vision for a different kind of Houston. Now, very symbolic because Houston's the oil centre. This is where uh, the whole world of cheap oil uh, was developed across America. So they are talking about that. And when you go there, this is uh, the last urban freeway to be built in the US called the Katy Freeway. And it did cost 100 million per mile. It is massive and it just goes on and on Extraordinary, and you see the Lone Star, of course, in every column. Um, and it's kind of poetic and so on, but uh, a massive amount of money. And when you look at it, there are places there where it's 20 lanes wide. Um, how to reclaim that and how to change the city, you really do need a, a, a serious imagination. But there is a group doing that. And they, for example, get down to, they've got a, a big project on to try and stop the widening of this road, which is going to go right out and take these trees out. Uh, so they, they were showing us some of the projects that they work on, that kind of level. This is the, <laughs> some of the people from Houston tomorrow with their new light rail. Sorry about that. It's a bit hard to see. Um, so Atlanta is similar, and I, I re, it is an extraordinary, sprawling city. It just goes on and on and on. And in terms of energy use, Atlanta and Houston here, by far the worst across the world. 103 gigajoules, 84, compared to 50 in the US, 35 with us, 20 in the European cities, 8 in Barcelona, this kind of thing. So it is the city that is most vulnerable uh, to this in this new world. And uh, you wonder how they're going to take it. Um, well, they took it pretty well. For a start, they're quite proud of the fact that they are making some small steps. So MARTA is, was built for the Olympics and is uh, already working very well. Uh, it is a new uh, electric transit system and they've built a number of TODs. So this is, this is where PB actually is based there. They've, this is the station here. And it doesn't look like that urban sprawl, does it? So they're not short of density. It's just mostly fairly scattered. But every now and then, it is now appearing around their TODs, the, the transit system. And it, it's quite uh, dramatic, some of the buildings. This is PB's office. And in terms of engulfing and uh, reclaiming freeways, it's, that TOD is pushing it right out over the road now and shows you what you can do to... Uh, 
to reclaim highway space. We went to Georgia Tech, which is one of the biggest urban and regional planning centres in, in, in the US. And uh, there you've got a, a group of students who are trying very, very hard to change their city. One of their master's students produced a plan for a green belt which was reclaiming an, an old railway line area and turning it into a, a new railway with a, with a bikeway and a series of green innovations all around this belt. And this plan has now been adopted by the city. So it's a very good example of, of how uh, uh, people who get in there and imagine things differently can have a big effect. And so it was a very hopeful sign. Uh, fair way to go though in a city like Atlanta. So then we had a final stop here in Charlottesville. Uh, this is Randy Saltzman who will be coming back here in September, August, September. Uh, this is where we stayed. Sam turned 18 on this day and uh, there's his uh, birthday cake. Um, uh, they put out a sign for him. Actually it was for someone else but we took that. Um, and he had his first uh, rattlesnake, uh, which some of you will know about. Uh, it's a Randy Saltzman special. This is Tim and his wife. We went to their house. Uh, they, since they came to Fremantle and stayed here, uh, they've become total advocates of uh, Aboriginal art. And some of the best Aboriginal art in the world is in Charlottesville, not just in his house, but there's a special collection there. And uh, they keep purchasing it and it is amazing stuff. So they want to come back as well uh, and come and see some of these sites. Finally, uh, just a few reflections. Uh, on the inauguration because it was a great thing to be part of. It, that weekend began with the miracle on the Hudson as it's called. The, instead of a plane flying into a building and killing thousands of people, we had a, a plane that was miraculously saved, very clever pilot, uh, very immediate responses from the surrounding boats. Everyone saved and uh, it was an omen for me of a uh, a uh, very different kind of future and, uh, and one that would certainly help as, as we went from New York down to uh, Washington DC. Uh, this was at the station where as soon as you get there you, you realise that it's pandemonium um, and outside there's thousands of people and they're all trying to sell you uh, memorial mugs. Where were you when history was made? Um, and, uh, and lots of material uh, about the, the transition. Um, this is uh, all the t-shirts and so on that you could buy. Um, and we went to an inaugural ball that night. Now there were hundreds of these balls on. We, we actually had tickets, uh, I suppose they cost several hundred dollars, but uh, the people we were staying with had some extra tickets. So we went to the black tie inaugural boots ball, uh, black tie and boots ball uh, put on by the Texan State Society. Uh, there were 10,000 of our closest friends there and it uh, was pretty amazing. So this isn't quite what we expected but off we went. Now when you get there you think, gee this is a pretty big group here. Uh, this was just the queue to be able to put your coats into, the, uh, <laughs> into a space, <laughs> that entire room. Um, and massive hallways with about six of these with different bands playing and, uh, and the Texans doing their thing. It wasn't quite uh, the same mood I think they would have felt if uh, the previous uh, inauguration but uh, it was uh, still a pretty happy time and uh, everybody out celebrating. You've got the CIA in the background here. Um, so the next day we the inauguration, this is how we were meant to be absolutely packed on the metro. When we got into the carriage, that's what greeted us. But we were on the end of the line and uh, uh, it wasn't long before it filled up. So when we got out at the station, Longfond Plaza, it, it took us an hour to get out because you're just inching along, working your way forward. At one stage we could see this exit up in front and someone said, can we get out of here? Yes, we can. <laughs> Um, and we were very, very thankful for, for riding the metro. 
Washington DC became a car free city. There were no cars and it was entirely, there was a million people rode the metro and the, the streets were just filled uh, with people walking, um, keeping each other warm. It was 90% black. They'd come from all over America. This was their day. And uh, it, it was just huge joy on the faces of everybody. And a lot of fun was, ha was had by all. This is as close as we could get to them all. Um, that's the, the uh, what do you call it, Washington uh, Monument. And uh, you can see everyone rugged up. It was very, very cold. And uh, after a few hours of it, that was about as much as we could take as we froze stiff. But uh, it, it was a fantastic welcome and, uh, and one that uh, we'd long remember.